Dave here. Hey there, Dave here. Welcome to a uh, very exciting Dumb Money Live. We are live in person. I haven't <laughs> seen you in a, in a show environment. 10 months. It's unbelievable. <laughs> this is kind of a historic day, not only for Dumb Money, but for collectors, for Pokemon, for... It's, it's kind of a big deal. Investors, I to, think, philanthropy, right? It, yes. Today we are, um, we are doing probably the single largest transaction in Pokemon history. This is, this is insane. The, the last most expensive box that sold was like $200,000, right? Um, I don't know. Let's, let's, let's ask our Pokemon team. We have, an entire, we have an entire team of Pokemon experts here. Isn't this great living in Dallas that we have these two guys? Guys, introduce yourself. I mean, this is so amazing. Thank you for coming today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, Mom. My name is Leonard, and I run a YouTube channel where I open up Pokemon cards. I collect, I invest in cards, and I'm very, very excited to be here. Thank you for being here. Appreciate hey, guys. I'm Scott Emmer, DFW Pokemon. Um, I collect Pokemon cards. I buy and sell them. Um, just reliving my childhood every day. You know, like we, we deep dive due diligence into everything we do at Dumb Money, especially when we're doing things that we know nothing about. And I knew nothing about Pokemon a week ago. Absolutely nothing. Now, I probably spent 40, 50 hours researching the Pokemon, you know, sector this last week, but I don't know if I'm about to spend $375,000 on a resealed bogus box of Pokemon cards. <laughs> and I want to do everything in my power to make sure that doesn't happen. And that's why you, you guys are here. And so I really sincerely appreciate you guys being here because it's not necessarily to protect my money. Um, as we'll learn today, we have a really special um, plan for this Pokemon box. We are purchasing a first edition 1999 Pokemon box base set, which is the most expensive box of Pokemon cards in the history of Pokemon. I think it just might be the most expensive box set of collectible cards that have ever been purchased. It might be the most expensive transaction <laughs> that's ever gone down uh, for a set of cards of anything. And none of it is for us. Uh, we are doing this entire thing for two, there's two purposes behind this transaction. The first purpose is I truly believe this is a good investment. Uh, Logan Paul invested $200,000 in a box of Pokemon cards exactly like this, uh, auctioned them off a few weeks later to all of his friends and YouTubers and influencers and essentially doubled his money and made a pretty significant investment to charity. Um, I feel we can do the same thing now because there are so many influencers, so many celebrities, YouTubers that are rushing into this Pokemon game there's only like 40 to 70 box sets that we know of in North America. And so everyone's chasing probably half a dozen to a dozen that would actually be willing to sell their box sets at any price, quite honestly, because a lot of these Pokemon collectors are so passionate about what they do. It's their identity. They don't want to sell. If they happen to have one of these box sets, they don't want to sell it because once you open it, there's one less box set. And let's explain. For those of you all that are coming from dumb money and don't really understand the Pokemon space, these box sets, guys, explain it to us. There's 36 packs. How, what's the origin of this box set that I'm buying today? Tell us a little bit about it. So the origin that I know in the background, um, this box comes from the Northeast, um, which obviously they're printed by Wizards of the Coast, uh, and they started in Seattle and New York. Uh, so obviously you're gonna see the most first edition stuff coming from the coast and working its way in. Um, this was the first box ever printed in America. So um, it started in Japan in 96, came to America in 99. And first edition is basically the holy grail of Pokemon. Um, it's kind of like your Michael Jordan of basketball, right? Or your Mickey Mantle of baseball. That's, that's what first edition English Pokemon is about. Mm -hmm. Do you and, want to add to that? Yeah, and tell us what makes this box so, like what's in this box that everybody wants? Tell us a well, little bit. Well, there's one card called the first edition base set Charizard which I actually have pulled on my channel before when I opened up a pack. You mean this card? And, oh, what are you? <laughs> there is, uh, that's one of them right there. And uh, tell us a little bit about it though. What so, makes this card so special? So Charizard is basically, I guess you would say the mascot of Pokemon outside of Pikachu. Mm -hmm. um, as a kid, this was like the hardest card to pull. 
Um, this one is in a plastic case. You're probably like, what is this plastic case? It's graded by PSA, which is Professional Sports Authenticators, um, one of the most reputable companies in the world for grading cards. It's graded an eight out of 10. 10 is the best you can get. Um, tens are selling in excess of $225,000. So um, pulling this card out of that box is probably the best thing you could ever do. I mean, yeah. that's all we ever want to do, right? <laughs> and, and isn't there even one higher grade than that, that there's only like three or four that in existence, right? It's a- Are uh, you talking about the Beckett Pristine yes. 10? So yes. Beckett Grading Services, or BGS, is actually located in Dallas, here in Dallas. And uh, I believe there may have been, there was only a few of them, Two. but up until recently, one actually got graded. So now there are three Beckett Pristine 10s, which is actually better quality than for the most part than, for instance, a PSA 10, which is the best grade that you can get. And uh, once again, a, a point, you know, he's, a magi he's a magician, apparently. Um, this is a, kind of an example. This one? Yeah, uh, I don't really know where, like what camera, but like, so basically this is a gold label Beckett Pristine 10 right here. And this, it, there's only three first edition base set Charizards that are in this. And I, like, how much would you say one of those would go for? Like, at least 500. Point? At least 500,000. Half a million dollars. At least. Um, this is uh, from another set. This is uh, uh, another set from Wizards of the Coast, but it is a Charizard. But the gold label itself uh, basically is the cream of the crop, other than getting something called a black label from Beckett, where the label would actually be black. Because you, <laughs> there's four subcategories, and you would get four tens for each category. And the difference with this one is there's three tens and one 9.5, which is a different type of grading system. So that would be the cream of the crop is basically a gold label Beckett Pristine 10, but of this guy, a first edition base at Charizard. And up until recently, there was only two in the world. Now there are three. So I, I'm gonna say something right now. So you mean there could be a half million dollar card in the box set that we're about to purchase? Potentially, it has yeah, potential. Absolutely. So dumb money, I'm gonna tell you guys, anyone watching the show right now, we'll get into specifics later, but there will be an opportunity for anyone watching this show over the course of the next year to potentially receive a half million dollar card from this box set. We're not going to sell it to you. We're not going to auction it to you. We're just going to give it away. We're going to give away a chance uh, for anyone in the world to have potentially a half million dollar uh, base set Charizard Beckett 10, what do you call it? Yep. Beckett? Beckett Pristine 10. Beckett Pristine 10. We don't know if it will be a Beckett Pristine 10. We don't even know that we're going to get one for sure in the box. I think the chance of getting one in this box set is about 65%. Is that sound about right? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it, it's really weird. It's like the, the chance to get any of the holographics, you have a chance to get, I don't know the exact percentage, but you have an equal chance yeah. to get every single one. From like my experience, it always seems that the Charizard is the rarest one that you can get in the most difficult one. But I've seen from a box, you usually get one Charizard. Yeah, that's what I've heard. There's a pretty good chance you're going to get one Charizard in a box. We don't know which of the 36 packs it will be in, and we don't know what the grading will be. But, you know, we gave away a Peloton. We gave away an iPhone. And now we're giving away the chance at winning a Pokemon card that could be a Charizard. Half million dollar card. It's possible. And that's because we want to involve the entire community uh, in this project, and it's a really important project for us. We'll talk a bit more about it when our sellers arrive, and they should be here. I don't know. Well, they should be here any minute now, right? Twelve minutes from now. Okay, so hopefully the sellers are on their way and not running too late. Um, we have some other cards, some other packs. Can you tell us a little bit about this? I mean, let's learn a little bit about Pokemon. So, Here. I'll give you one to hold, too. You want to check out one, Chris? I'll be the, the yeah. Dana White. This one actually has a Charizard on the front. Okay. Um, the, oh, sig wow. the significance of these packs, these That's are cool. actually the packs that are going to be pulled out of this box. Their first edition base set. There's three artworks, a Venusaur, a Blastoids, and a Charizard. And those are the different pack arts you're going to see. And you can pull your cards out of those individual packs. Wow. These are considered what we call a blister pack, which is cardboard with clear plastic. And these were hung at like your Toys R Us or 7-Eleven hey. on the shelf to purchase. Looks like the uh, perfect timing. Here they here. are. It has arrived. We got a bonus. We thought there were two, and there's three. Uh, let me get let me get a third chair. Hey guys, just uh, yeah, just fine. We'll just go on the other side there. And uh, hey, good to see you guys. 
Uh, let me get a third chair for y'all. And we'll get you mic'd. What's going on? What's going on? How's it going? All right. A little, little tight there. All right. Hi, you, you guys are punctual, arriving just on time. Starbucks and shit. Awesome. Well, what, what, is this your first time in Dallas? Um, yeah, it's been here a long time. A couple times. Okay. I, I, I think this is like, this week's like a Pokemon run for you guys. This is not, you got a whole lot going on this week, don't you? No, this is a crazy week. After this, we fly to Baltimore and then New York the following day, and that wraps up like the three-day schedule. Wow. Wow. Well, thanks for coming to Dallas. Really appreciate coming all, coming all the way out here for this transaction. Oh, tell us, tell us like what you were the impetus, I think, for a lot of what's been going on the past, what, one to two months in the Pokemon world. We've been talking about it. Yeah. I thought you guys were just, you know, Pokemon collectors, right? I did some research on you. And no, like, what I love so much is you guys are investors just like us. I mean, I know you have a background in crypto, but I listened to one of your podcasts about why it was that you got to Pokemon this year, specifically. And I have a lot of respect for it because you're thinking as to what got you into Pokemon. It's the same exact way we think about investments. You saw an opportunity to actually like illuminate a market that would increase that market's value. And your actual work illuminating that market brought more value to everyone in the market, including yourself. Now, it probably happened a lot quicker than even you thought, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. I was giving prices that people would laugh at. Like, if two months ago, I was like the laughing stock of the Pokemon community because the joke was by Christmas. In the video with Logan, where I sold him a card under market, I And this is, this is the YouTuber Logan Paul. Right? YouTuber Logan okay. Paul. Which, which the by the first... way, that, that's, the, that's my introduction to Pokemon. You basically are the only reason I've even heard of this being a thing, right? <laughs> so, I was the first person to sell the Logan, and during that deal, I sold him under market cost. Everyone's like, oh, you're inflating prices, you're selling them to him over cost. I'm like, I could get twenty two to 23000 for the card, one of the cards I sold him, and I sold it to him for sixteen. That was a hit. I made money on the card because I bought it months prior, but I, I screwed myself out of $6,000 like that, knowing by bringing Logan and other influencers, it would bring in huge demand. And so I look at it as an investment too, because that 6000 brought the exposure of 20 million people who had never even heard of Pokemon since 1999 back into the space. So people say he's only in it for the money. The only reason I got into Pokemon is it's my favorite thing from my childhood and the only thing I'm nostalgic about. When I sold my first Pokemon card for 70% profit, I'm like, whoa, that took less than a month? I'm a trader. I don't make 70% in a year sometimes. <sighs> then I realized I'm onto something beyond the nostalgia. And so you don't have to be nostalgic. It doesn't have to be an investment. It can be both, really simply. A absolutely. And what I thought, you know, I know Logan, you know, a lot of people are hard, hard on Logan Paul, but he's, he legitimately loves Pokemon, though, right? I mean, this is not... Oh, beyond love. He has, before he bought a Pokemon card, like before he owned a single card, he has a Squirtle tattoo on his hip. That wasn't like by dumb luck. He did that years ago and then like was introduced to Pokemon by Gary Vee and then bought cards from me. So like legitimately, he just loved Pokemon since he was a kid. This isn't like him trying to inflate the market. Everyone wants the market to go up. Like an investment, it goes up, we make money, everyone's happy. And this is what he companies do every single day. A big part of being a publicly traded company is exposing your company as an investment to more investors, right? Because the larger the base of investors, the more healthy the market is for that investment. It's not just about increasing price for the investment, it's about increasing liquidity. Because liquidity is actually many times more important than price. Because when you have a liquid market, it brings in more investors that are willing to transact because it's a liquid market. And a liquid market is actually better for everybody involved. Um, I think that's something that a lot of people don't understand. And what I saw with your transaction with Logan, and then I saw the depth of how interested Logan really is in Pokemon, I said, this is not a fad for him. This is not something that Logan's gonna do for a few weeks and then forget about and never talk about again. He has a true passion and interest in this. And I think, Listen, I'm a salesperson, and I always said it's not necessarily what you say, it's how you say it. 
And when I saw the way Logan was emotionally involved in this subject matter, he is one of the largest YouTubers. He is getting other people excited about this. And Graham Stephan is a financial YouTuber that we're close with and follow. And I saw his passion, and he actually has a true passion for Pokemon. I said, you know what? There's something here, and this is not going to just die out overnight. And there's so much scarcity, and you identified the scarcity early on. How often do you get to invest in something that literally has 40 to, like this base set, for example, 40 to 70 base sets that we know of, at least, in North America? That's like so scarce. I mean, that, not everyone's going to sell theirs, right? So you could literally be talking about half a dozen, a dozen that are realistically purchasable in any reasonable price above what the market is today. Mm -hmm. I actually truly do believe that that box that I'm looking at for the first time right oh now is so cool. <laughs> and that <laughs> box. It used to be a pink bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a pink bag turned into the box. No, I figured if we're going to do like taping and talking this yes. whole time, might as well not have like an obnoxious pink bag on the couch. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> have the box just like casually out. We'll go through the box later, but we can talk until then. Um, that box is, I think, it could be a million dollar box. At some oh, point. short term. Right? This went dollar. from Absolutely. Logan paid a record price. When Logan paid yeah. for it, people laughed at him at 225. And then he was able to break the packs down, sell them for 396,000, and donate 120,000 to charity. So the combination made Logan money, made charity a ton of money, and made one of the biggest viewerships of 2020 all on YouTube where no one had to pay for anything besides their contribution. So it's all interconnected and it works beautifully. And like you said, supply and demand, we're all in this because we were in crypto. We got into crypto because we don't like government printing of money. So Bitcoin, fixed printing, we got into crypto because of the limited supply of Bitcoin. And that limited supply was 21 million. Well, when we're looking at Pokemon cards and how many first edition boxes in the world? 50, 100, <laughs> maybe 200 if there's like a collector with like stash stuff. But we're talking limited numbers here. Yeah. So when we're talking numbers like that and the demand is constant, you bought one, the minute you bought one, Three other influencers came out. Yep. We'll buy one for 400. But yep. well, we already have a deal with you. We can't back out of the deal. It's deflationary too. You're removing it from circulation as well. That, that yeah. is exactly right. Every time you break a box, there's there's less, right? No more. There's less. less. Nope. And and you know now people are laughing at me. Listen, a few months ago, uh, my own viewers, my own dumb money viewers, who I love so much, they were laughing at me. They thought I had kind of walked off the cliff when I said, you know what, guys. Uh, this TikTok roller skating fad has spun out of control. You can't buy roller skates anywhere. I'm investing in Zoomies, man. And, uh, you know, Zoomies is up like 50% in the last few months. So I, I was and, laughing at you. You were laughing at me. Everyone's like, yeah. half my investments, people laugh at me. They, they don't get it. Uh, you know, the container store, right? Uh, the ladies from Home Edit. And sure enough, container store is up 500% in, in 60 days. So that's what we do. People have laughed at me for a long time. In fact, my, my book was called Laughing at Wall Street because I laugh at smart money. You know, people think that we're dumb money, but we've proven that dumb money can do quite well. Um, it really doesn't matter who you are. Listen, who is Logan to invest in Pokemon? Well, Logan knows as much about you know investing in Pokemon from talking to people like yourself and learning than anyone else does, right? And we want to inspire people to just start thinking about investing. And I think Pokemon, honestly, for a lot of people, especially young people that are just engaged in the Pokemon universe, can start to transition their passion and love for a subject matter and learn about investing. And so my goal here is to merge this huge world with the world of investing. And so now that you guys are here, I'll kind of tell you our plan for it. Mm -hmm. We are going to purchase this box today. We're going to have our Pokemon experts look at the box weigh the box, we're going to open the box, we're going to actually inspect the packs, make sure everything's legit, I'm sure it is, but just to make sure. Of um, then we're going to hand you this briefcase that has $375,000 of cash in it. Uh, we're going to take that box, we're going to reseal it with uh, tamper-proof seals on camera. Uh, we are going to put it away, uh, someplace safe, not in my house, uh, so don't, don't come rob me. Uh, I'm gonna put it away in a bank vault, and in approximately one year, when we're done with all this and we're not having to wear face masks anymore, we want to throw the world's largest Pokemon investor party in Las Vegas, okay? And we wanna invite the entire world to be there with us. We are going to invite the most exciting, amazing money YouTubers, 
guys that we know. Uh, this world is on fire right now. Investing is on fire. So people that are involved with investing will hopefully be there with us. We want to invite the Pokemon community, uh, any influencers that are involved in investing or Pokemon or card collecting, and let's bring these two worlds together. Let's break this box and the actual packs at that time live on stage in Vegas. Um, we are going to auction off the packs sometime prior to that. Uh, and we are going to commit right now to donating 100% of the money that comes from those packs. Not just the profits, but 100% that I hope will be at minimum $375,000 unless we have a crash here. Uh, and maybe, who knows, it could be as high as a million dollars to charity, but we're going to do it in an interesting way. There's 36 packs. I'm going to pull two of those packs, not for myself. I'm going to pull them for the community. And those two packs I'm going to divide uh, to, and give away, basically. I'm going to give them away over the course of the next year. We're going to do a lot of collabs. Uh, we might do a collab with you. And when we do that collab with you, we might take, you know, uh, basically donate one of those cards to your community. And you can figure out how to give that Ooh. card away. And when we pull the packs a year from now, those packs will be labeled, identified, and each card will be numbered. So maybe card number four and pack number eight will go to the X person. And so they might or might not be on stage with us, but they'll get to watch live for the entire world to see. And there will be dozens of cards that will be given away over the next year to people in the Pokemon world and people in the investing world. And they'll get to be part of this experience, right? And those influencers that purchase packs from us to open that night, 100% of the proceeds from that pack will go to their favorite charity. As long as it's a non-political charity, we will donate 100% of the money to charity. So at hopefully a year from today, we'll be donating maybe somewhere between $400,000 and a million dollars to causes all around the world that are important to people who ultimately purchase these packs to open together that night. And we'll be a celebration, a post-pandemic celebration uh, for collectors, for investors, and... It will be the first ever dumb money event that our audience, that our our followers have been asking for for the past year. What do you guys think? You like it? Is it you cool with this? I think it's, I think awesome. it's, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> and, and the fact that we're giving other people who are not collectors or not able to buy a three hundred thousand dollar box the opportunity to participate in this is just awesome. Yep. So here's the deal. Yep. We're going to give away some cards to our community, and we have a place to go right now. If you're watching the show, there's a place you can go right now and you could sign up. Uh, I'm not sure it's quite ready. I'll... <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Not yet. By the end of the show, we will maybe uh, announce. I'm going to work on that real quick. And, and if nothing else, uh, we will put in the description of the show or in the comment of the show where to go. Uh, but in addition to that, we will be doing many, many, many collabs over the next year. And in each of those collabs, uh, the collab influencer will announce how to get their card, right, uh, that they'll be getting as part of this kind of experiment over Amazing. the next year. It's all for good, guys. It's all for good. So let's let's do this, right? <laughs> yeah. Let's do, do it. <laughs> Are you live right now? You want me to retweet it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're, yeah, we're live right now. Um, so that news is out. Well, how do we do this? Do we just w open the box? I mean, I'm not going to touch any of this, just so you know. So this is going to be in the hands of people that have actually touched it. <laughs> the the easiest way to guarantee authenticity yeah. is to pop it open. I didn't okay. know if you actually wanted to open yes, it. Yes, we're going to open. Let's have it open like, on camera live so we know we're not doing anything weird with the packs. No problem. Um, the owner of the box supposedly bought three boxes okay. when he was a child. His parents bought him three. They sat in the gun safe the entire time. Um, there's a little bit, you'll see, of wear on one of the top edges. He says 100% money back for me if indeed it is fake. I spoke to him yesterday, good guy. I've done lots of deals with him before. I've done all the inspections a normal person would be able to do without cracking it. Okay. Even the cellophane that has scratches, you can see the scratches on the cellophane. And if you move the cellophane, it's not on the box. Okay. So you know that even like the stuff that's like been brushed up against it is on the cellophane, not on the internal. Do you guys want to take a quick look as well? Want to take a quick look? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah let's have course, these guys take a quick look, and that way we test, can... Which is like the most important to know like what's in it. You push down, you look inside. All first edition should be long crimp, longer tops. You can see that. But people who fake boxes, the way they fake them, is they put two long crimp in the top. So mm -hmm. when you do the peak test, you see that. So from my inspection, I bought it thinking peak test worked. I understood the guy owned three boxes. I've worked with him before. It all seemed legit. Okay. So, in my opinion, it looked good. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was even worried when you just like dragged it there. Like, oh, no, the seal. <laughs> uh, We're gonna so, break the seal anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, that way. I'm just like for myself, it's always interesting to because I own a box like this, and when I made the purchase last year for eighty thousand dollars for my box, Oof. I did every single thing I could possibly do to uh, like what you were saying, because mm -hmm. you do gotta look for like specifically. This is my biggest like. Oh my gosh. But then again, you look at the seal, and is it like, is the seal affected just how it is on the side of the box as well, too? So I'm just curious real quick, because I know we're going to open it, but like when I just go down, is there's something you can tell, and I don't know how the, if the camera can get this or not, but basically what I've seen from boxes is the pack on this side usually is below the pack on this side. Mm -hmm. From like almost all the boxes that I've seen opened up throughout the past years. is the, So when you try to do like the shake text, uh, text uh, test, for instance, you can try to shake it, but the packs are almost gonna just stay locked in there, which makes you be like, oh no, they're taped or something like that. But that's what makes the shake test really, really difficult. So looking at this, it does look like it's kind of like, the packs are almost like level, but the one on this side is a little bit lower. Uh, so that's one of the many tests that you can do as far as just taking a look at the that's size of the thing. box. And yeah, so yeah. it's a good thing. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm saying, so I'm just saying like from like, yeah, from like a quick little test and just to, you know, get things moving. The uh, just concern I had was the same thing he pointed out. When you have a fake box that's been resealed, the way they do it is they fold up, this piece comes out, and like you've seen in stores, they fold this up. But at the same time, if there's ever been pressure on the top of the box, the only spot in the box that's reinforced cardboard is where it's folded up. So if this was three boxes stacked, which it was in the gun safe for 20 years, it would have had pressure right here. Sure. So you'd get these indentations yep. regardless. That doesn't yep. mean it was folded up. Mm -hmm. And we've done the peak test to break it to make sure. Yep. So could there be two packs on top taped together? Yeah. There's always a chance. But based on the cellophane, based on the peak test, I'd say no. We're going to find out very quickly. <laughs> and I do also want to say, as far as like other tests that you can do, you could like just weigh the overall box. I don't know from y'all's experience, if you know the weight is approximately around one pound, uh, 12 ounces, mm. is from what I've seen a typical box weigh. Yeah, we have a scale here too. So yeah, but, it's, but the, but the yeah. scale though, as He's far as is this, yeah, yeah it's for packs, like weighing yeah. individual packs because you would need, a, I think, like a little bit of a bigger yeah, yeah. scale for that. Okay. But um, so if that's one of the many ways, but if you want to take a look real quick. So what are your concerns? I don't have, to me, I don't see any concerns with the outside. I, my concerns are the ones that you were saying as far as, you know, right here, right here, just the normal, but it's like a normal wear of a box that's over 20 years old. Yeah, that's so that's where it's like you can counter with that. Because, but um, you take a look at like the seal itself. Um, sometimes the color of the seal I've noticed on fake ones before is a little bit more blue or greenish tint. This seal looks like it's clear, transparent, which yeah. is nice. Transparent, it's the proper thickness and it's even got like, the normal wear and tear, it's got almost like little holes yeah. coming out. Right like here, yeah. If you sealed something 20 years ago and it's been stretched for 20 years, it's not like it's been resealed recently. If it was real seal resealed, it was like 19 years ago because the Saran, yeah. if you look at it compared to old 1999 WTC boxes, especially first edition, the Saran is identical. It lines up right across the middle of the boxes. Yeah, my only concern was the two little indentations, and even that's like, you look at other boxes, almost all have either a bent corner or a little indentation. Yeah. It's very normal to find that. You it's see, a very pristine box. Investing given. in stocks is so much easier. You just hit a button, <laughs> you, know, you know the company's probably real. <laughs> right? yeah. You know, that said, there's a lot of, you know, there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of fraud in the investing world, too. Would, would so. you t I like to I'll take a look. look at it. <laughs> if you drop it, and it's real? It's no real. worries. <laughs> yeah. No worries. Well, oh yeah. That definitely looks like I have no idea what I'm looking at. <laughs> what you're looking for is this right here. What? This longer print. Longer, the longer print. Yeah. So, I'll show you. And they do yeah, have okay, it. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah so you're you right. Can see how long the silver yes. is at the top? Okay, gotcha. That's good news. And see how the one on the right yes. is slightly higher? Yes. That's also good All news. All right. Yep. So those two things are a good sign. Cool. But the ones who fake like the box is the best. $5, does it feel like it's you? I'm not touching it. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's approximately it the same like weight. It. it does feel like approximately the same weight. Well, guys, when you guys when you guys are opening this, so whoever's going to open it, tell us about your back. Tell us who you are. I don't think we did a proper introduction, so tell well, us the whole Luke. team. Well, um, my name is Luke Wagman. I come from the crypto world. I um, helped build, grow, and sell the, the website coinmarketcap.com. Huh? And, and now I kind of do uh, investing and entrepreneurial things like Pokemon. I'm a huge nerd. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I about that. Yeah, so uh, my name is Z. 
I come also from the crypto world. My background was previously in civil engineering. Um, came into the crypto world as a full-time trader. So I am very familiar with um, trading crypto as well as more legacy markets like Forex. Um, in the past two years, me and my, I guess, family office type fund, we primarily do like fintech investments. So I'm involved in the esports scene, crypt, uh, Pokemon, crypto, and a few other uh, um, medical medical investments, I guess. Okay, great. Yeah. So I'm Jake in the crypto space. I'm known as the Crypto King. I was a big trader. I've had some of my own projects. Um, the crypto space has had its ebbs and flows. Um, I tried to pivot money out of crypto into hard assets that will similarly appreciate and that you can apply crypto trading techniques to. And I realized the simplest one and the most nostalgic one was Pokemon. And I started applying like the most basic trading techniques to the Pokemon markets and they were working like as well as you could imagine. Supply 101 from high school, like literally Econ 101 from high school with supply and demand played out perfectly. So I was like, with how low these circulating supplies are, people talk about a bubble. I don't know if a bubble can exist. If there's 20 boxes in the world and three are going to be shredded in the next six months, there's 17. The bubble's not getting bigger, it's getting smaller. Yeah, yeah. And so, yep. but the price is inflating because more wealthy people are coming into money who find it nostalgic wanting to buy them. Whoever opens it, you feel like a kid. We were talking about yesterday just taking the L and just opening the whole thing and being like, okay, nope, let's walk no, away no, from no, the that money. Was not, that, that wasn't me. That was it. <laughs> we were talking about it and he walked in, he's like, no. It was a joke. It was a joke. But um, at the same time, it's like, when are you going to be a kid again? It's like, would you pay for the price of reliving your childhood? And that price is priceless. So we went from crypto to pivoting into hard assets to being like, this is so nostalgic and we can make money at it. Nothing better in the world. Totally. And you guys probably know a little bit about us. Myself, Dave, Jordan, Dumb Money, uh, you know, and the extension of our team. You don't see them right now. Lynn, could you pop in the camera? Our other four <laughs> partner, Lynn. Come on, get in the camera. Say hi. Yes. Say hi. <laughs> Can he, is he in there? Is he in the shot? There you go. That's Lynn. If this is Lynn's beautiful house. Thank you, Lynn, for allowing us to use your house. We, we talk about how we've turned tens of thousands into tens of millions. If you conclude our fourth partner, Lynn, it's probably tens of thousands into about 100 million. So it's, it's been a great 15 years uh, starting companies, selling companies, trading. Um, we are just regular people. Like, we're not from Wall Street. We don't have that institutional background. And I like to think we've done better than just about anyone with an institutional background. So this is about inspiring ordinary people to do amazing things, whether it's collecting in Pokemon cards and making 50 times your money in a year, or investing in crypto, or just investing in stocks because you are able to identify change early. And really, the impetus of everything we do with investing is about early identification of change. If we're able to identify change early and then connect that change to investable opportunities, you literally could be one of the world's best traders and best investors. And that's, that's it. That's all that we do, right, in one way or another. It could be starting a company or it could be investing in a publicly traded company or buying a box of Pokemon cards. So let's do this, guys. Let's open this up and see where this goes. Please. <laughs> Makes me nervous. Somebody um, else. I am not going to open the box. So I, I'd rather have box. I won't do it. I think you should because it's your box yeah. if you want. Or, um, but what I would say is to help leave the seal as much intact, what you can do is if you have, like, maybe a box cutter or some type of... Not blind. No, do you have a letter, a letter opener, or yeah. a letter, a letter opener? opener. Do or or like a steak Lynn, knife? you don't have a letter Even? opener, do you? Yeah. Or a steak knife would work. A letter opener, a butter knife, maybe. <laughs> butter. Just any kind of knife. Oh, what's a letter? Oh, what's a letter? Through the fronts and the sides, so we can just pop Me? off the top. Oh, no, 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 whoever's <laughs> gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. oh. <laughs> that actually works. We are. are we are. I guess I'll do the opposite. Oh, you're gonna. Okay. It's his box. Okay. Oh my goodness, this is exciting. Yeah, he'll tell you. Huh? No, no, no. Yes, I'm cold, yeah. but no, I'm fine. Just to leave the seal intact as much for yeah, when we reseal it. Yeah, you should be going live right now on Collectibles Guru. Hey, at least a Wait, hold on one second. I gotta get a video of this. Yeah, let's uh, do a little... There you go, straight across the front. This, this is going out to so many YouTube channels right now. Ready, guys? Let's do it. That shit, actually. Congrats, you're officially a Pokemon card yeah. YouTuber opener. I'm going to give this to a real Pokemon person to open. I trust you guys. It is totally not your liability well, to make a mistake. I think <laughs> so go ahead. Well, you I have done this. I need to get the I, sides. Like, can you go through the sides as well real quick? Yeah. Oh, you know what? I trust you. Go oh, ahead. Boy. Go through I'll the sides. <laughs> go ahead. I trust you. No one wants the liability. I don't want the liability. <laughs> All right, we need, we need camera. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. 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 Yeah, there you go. Ooh, baby. Doing a great job. 
Oh, Let's you slice that first pack open. We open it should right now. Should have been a heart <laughs> surgeon. Should have been a heart surgeon. We're going slow. Look at those hands, still steady. Very right. nice. Wait, so is this the moment? This Let's is the moment for, See? The, for the camera out there. Okay, it looks good Beautiful. initially. Beautiful. Looks good initially. Move the first couple packs. Let's see how we do. Here Let's we make it 19.99 again. Very nice. What are we looking for underneath those packs? Would be bad. The same pack. Oh, the same the thing. Same we want pack. the. Same. Does it say first edition? Uh, yes, yeah. that's perfect. Keep going. Woo! Keep going. Keep going. Oh, the color's different on that one than that one. That one's Just not a first edition pack. <gasps> that's Wait, an what? issue. This is an unlimited pack. Oh no. Oh yeah, look, God. they're open. Yeah, no, that's oh. a major fucking issue. This is a resealed box. Oh my box. God, it's a resealed box. All right, time to call the seller. Yeah, no money back on that. Oh, It's not even base set cards. Oh my God. These are jungles. Wow. Well, that's lovely. Time wow. Time to call the seller. Yep. Wow. This is oh a resealed box. Wow. Lovely. Oh no, but there's some packs at the bottom that are still first edition. It's random. Now. It's really random. But Why are they, they open or sealed? Open. They're open. They're open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are. Oh, no. Hi, we just opened wow. the box literally live and they're resealed packs. Look, energy cards. Yeah. And base, base set, set two. two. Yeah. There's like base set two mixed in. Half of them are first edition, but they're all resealed. This is absolutely unacceptable. Gosh, I'm not expecting that. Like immediately, I mean, immediately. Oh, <sighs> gosh. We're gonna get another box. All right. Oh no, we have another box you tomorrow do? that we're getting. This can be fixed, no okay, problem. Okay, awesome. It's, it, awesome. This is not an issue. It's just Ooh, awesome. uh, this is an issue. Well, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. No, 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 I mean, no this no, is no, a this huge. Is, I, I'm, no, no, I'm talking to the guys it's here. Correct. They're they're freaking out. Um, they're freaking out because of the box. Okay. You can tell it's torn. The first edition me, one that I pulled um, out first, how is this going to be taken I thought care of immediately weird. because obviously this isn't enough. Because, yeah, see, right here, I saw oh, this God. when I first pulled uh, it out. So and then I didn't see I was not because it was prepared for this. Edition. I honestly, everything but looks... But then the next one I saw I mean, unlimited because you saw the dark The chain color. of ownership looked great. As you heard, and, like, and so uh, I was not expecting well, that. To and you can tell so the colors, This is why yeah. we do this. So. I, Listen, they, we treat this no different than any other investment. It's all about pack. research, doing mm -hmm. your due diligence, yeah. right? And look at where right. the training and so part we spent always. the extra time That's to insane. recruit two amazing Pokemon wow. experts that are here with us today. Not that it would matter because the seller. And look, yeah, they're all tell, different they're, variants, too. just qualified See, to that's the bigger one, that's what's the real. smaller one. Yeah. He's just as upset yeah. as we yeah. are, because he purchased this box. Uh, and this pack I think is extra for thick, so over $100,000, $150,000 no, I mean, not too to long ago. So the pack. It's, just how it is. it's not just us, it's really I'm him now. So he's in a situation where he has to deal with his This is crazy. It's crazy, because now I feel terrible for him. We're okay. You know, we have it a makes transacted you, it makes yet, you, so yeah, I'm going to go pull my serious of cash right now. Like uh, we have not transacted, so we're safe. Sure I feel terrible lines. for him because yeah, he got duped. Like kind of like and so, oh, man, yeah, but, I mean, I'm going to grow it. The seals were so good on this I feel absolutely terrible for you guys. Yeah, that's horrible. No, I mean, it's part, it's part of the thing. It's part of the thing. Oh, good news. It looks like he has another box for us, though. So that's the good news. Uh, if they have, assuming they really do have another box for us, that would be amazing because we can still make this happen. One of the things why I was curious about this was because as much as you can do to verify the box, like what we were doing, and granted, I would have taken a little bit more time to verify, but since we were going to open it up, you know, that's the ultimate sign of being able to tell if a box is legit or not. Yeah. But like what you were saying, we thought the actual seals looked really good. Looked really, really good. They weren't just well, like discolored or anything. In fact, we thought they may have looked a little bit like they were just sitting, you know, for 20 years, and they may have. But I don't know how re like how recent do you think this box was resealed? If if not years ago. I mean, it could have been 20 years ago. It could have been 20 years ago because we've seen some that have been sealed sitting there, resealed for ten, like decades. And if he has multiple, he probably wants to check those. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, tell him to switch off of the lens. Oh, switch off of the. He's going to put it back on the middle. Yeah, so that's why I'm like, for the. Like, I see, we, like, that's my number one thing was seeing the creases on these folds. 
But at the same time, I'm just like... But still, you could open the box this way without bending those tabs because you could just lift like this, reseal without actually folding it. You can yeah. keep this straight and right. still not fold it to reseal it. Yeah. So they could look good. That, that's really hard. It's hard to do that, but you could. Uh, how are you, you feeling right now? Uh, <laughs> it's just, I'm, I'm in, sh I'm in no, shock. No, 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 no. And, uh, like, you know, I, I, I've been investing for, you know, 30, 30 plus years. And I've had moments like this when we found out that a company we were investing in was completely, been, if someone's been duped. I just feel horrific for you guys right now. No, absolutely not. I, like, I feel bad for you guys. I'm like, yeah, we spend a lot of are you going to be okay? Are you going to be okay, like, finding, getting your transaction back? Or do you, are oh, you, yeah. Okay. I know the seller exactly who we transacted with. He okay. says he can either give us the money back or give us another box that okay. we can break the seal on there in front of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what's going to happen now is that we're going to have to do round two. Okay. Um, so, you know, viewers... Stand yes. by for that. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and um, I, I want to say this, kind of viewers. I mean, this is really important. When you're doing a big, big transaction in life, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's Pokemon cards. We have done, you know, we've invested millions of dollars into startups, right? It's not always the product that you're investing in. It's the people behind it. Dealing with a quality seller, listen, we could have bought a box from anyone, right? I really felt that the seller we were buying the box from, and we, we conversed about this, yeah. right? They, they gave me their word that, you know, they had a deal with their seller. You have to make sure you, you understand who you're purchasing things from. Uh, and the fact is that we have the right people here, and if something goes wrong, which it did, we'll get it resolved, right? And I think that you guys purchase from a seller that you trust as well, and you'll get it resolved. But what if this was not the case? What if we were just buying this off of eBay, right? What if I had bought a box off of eBay and I was sitting here right now opening up a box I bought off of eBay. Now I have to try to dispute with eBay that I bought something that's not real. What does eBay know about Pokemon cards, right? Could you even imagine the process we would be going through trying to dispute with eBay or even an auction house, quite honestly, yep. right? Even an auction house, it would be hell. Once it's, open, it's like, Once it's open, what do you do? Yeah, It'd be there's months. no way for you to prove so, that you broke the seal. This was resealed this yeah. year. And put. There are 20, 20 cards in here. Wow. So this was resealed this year. Wow. That's insane. Wow. So the owner might actually know who resealed it if he only or is he selling it this year. reseal it himself. Yeah. Because yep. these are 2020 stamped right here. Yeah. 2020 stamped. Yeah. Yeah, you bought these right. in Philadelphia a month and a half ago. No, see, that's, I, I mean, you're right. All this? So this becomes down to, um, it just comes down to credibility, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the next step is to get another actual box and break it again. Absolutely. Well, listen, we're here. Yeah. We have the cash now. The cash will go back in the vault. Yep. Uh, and then we will be waiting on you guys. And yep. whenever you are able to identify another box for us, we are ready to go. We're okay. picking up the box today. Okay, <laughs> great. And uh, we are going to be back here, hopefully tomorrow. That's great. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll be back tomorrow. You know, we'll do that's, this that's the play. I mean, I, this is absolutely unacceptable. Um, yeah. You know, especially when you're coming into like real money. Yeah. Right? These aren't cheap products anymore. You're not talking about, you know, a thousand dollar car. Yeah. But this is good for the Pokemon community to see because with the hype, there are scammers and there are mm -hmm. things out there that can get you, right? Correct. You can't just buy everything you see. You need to investigate and research what you're getting, yeah. right? Because right. you don't know when this could happen to anyone. So let me ask you a question. The two packs that were on top that looked like legitimate packs, are, are those legitimate or? The they're, outside wrappers were. They're, they're legit so packs, but they were still uh, resealed, Re it looks like. So they're resealed first edition packs. Well, actually, no, yeah, yeah, it's it's resealed right there. Yeah, so, so you can tell when you so look open when you do the peak test, you can Everything see the first good. edition. Yeah. But then once you actually open the pack, it's not first edition cards. Gotcha. Someone opened them, took out the first edition, and then gotcha. put in. I don't even think we found a pack yet that has base set cards in it. Wow. Yeah, no, these are all jungle base set, base set two, yeah. 2020 energies. Well, um, this was the first pack on the top. Yeah. Hey, listen, guys. Uh, I invested. Uh, we we were playing around with Nicola shares a couple months ago, so <laughs> I know this very well. <laughs> this is a winning pack. I don't think I've ever seen one. 
I've ever seen this. <laughs> oh my gosh. A whole pack of energy. Oh, that one. That's not good, right? That's, no, that's not, that's <laughs> not good. That's one of one right there. <laughs> that's the one of one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's terrible. These are yeah. 20s as well. Yeah. Look at this. It's yeah. an entire pack of energy. I opened one over here with all energy. But they're 2020, so we know it was sealed this year. So you know what I want, Jake, is that I want um, this guy to actually hand us two boxes this time around. I want us, you know. They both need to be open, though. The thing about it is uh, that, you know, opening. if we're flying to Philadelphia, you know, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of money, you know, it's a lot of opportunity, because obviously you guys are taking yeah. your time. I'm not trying to waste anybody's time out here, right? It's, you know, it's just an expensive endeavor. So yeah, no, definitely something needs to happen, and trust me, it will be resolved. Hey, Don. You know what it looks like when, when I, I mentioned it just a little, but like when I was looking at the pack at the top, mm -hmm. it wasn't the, I said it was kind of like at level. Yeah. But I was like, we're going to open it. But up they to weren't find sliding out. either. Okay. And so he's, 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 he's here. Yeah, he's so not running. He's he's shaking. Shaking. So it wasn't shaking it. So, the, so in terms of. But it wasn't taped either. So from an outside glance, right, if you were to buy this box, let's say for $50,000, right, or like if you had some amazing deal, somebody didn't know about it. Yeah. Your initial play on this box, I guess, what would, you, would you guys buy it? I, okay, so honestly, I would not have purchased this box strictly because of these two things in the side right. It was just a dinged up box, but I, that would have, those are the like clear red flags, but at the same time, we looked at it and... The, we saw the actual like wrapper of the box and stuff, and it felt like a yeah. usual wrapper so, on a first edition base set yeah. box. You can tell the little seams on the side. So hopefully he makes now, because one thing we did box, talk so about was the seam on the side. It wasn't as box. clear white so as perhaps it usual tomorrow. could be. <laughs> However, we thought that was just mainly from like you know age. old age. So in a way, we gave that kind of more a credible yeah. source. We were From like, humidity oh, you know, because of how it was stored, that's actually a plus that the color is may not be as clear, transparent white as usual on these little seams on the sides. But as what for your question goes, I mean, these were kind of like initial signs. Um, for myself, but I was like, you know, we're going to open still it hard to, tell. Yeah. To, yeah. To, to obviously make so sure, you know, and I am, which is the main thing for myself was like, I was very, uh, very excited, but curious to do as much as we can um, of just a like sitting like a typical deal like somebody else could be doing in the course. world to finding out like what, what you were saying, is it a legit box or not? which Pokemon. now it's really like you almost have to open it up. You have to have these tamper-proof seals yeah. to you know, put, the, put back on the box once you do verify if the and box the is legit or not. So I, I feel like post today, like for the community, like what we've learned is you really, you're almost be better off opening and resealing, right? Just, just right. The, the, the risk reward, right? There's always some risk reward it's, in it. You almost have to now. But I feel like you're almost better off. I know it's nice to have a nice sealed box. Right. Beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, uh, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. what? On, on, on the positive, I don't want to say positive side, but for oh. value, it, there might be less real boxes than we thought. That's exactly, yes. what, I was, <laughs> that's exactly yeah. what I was just thinking in my head. I was like, now there's probably even less in circulation yeah, right. that we really think are credible, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, the big issue is that this guy who just sold us a box, right? He, said he, he has two more, apparently. We're going to take a look at both of those boxes. Yeah. Um, now, what if one more of those boxes is fake? Yeah. Now this guy who's, kn yeah, now this guy who's known to have yeah. three boxes on the market is now yeah. has one. If it's even, it's even if he even know. has <laughs> any in general, yeah. right? Which means that the entire circling supply of the boxes has just cut down dramatically. Yeah. You're talking about six percent. Yeah, yeah, it just got cut yeah. off the market. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. Well, anybody that's got a box now, if they haven't opened it yet. So Will they want to go and inspect this box a little bit deeper? I, I, I think that if you don't know where your original box is from, now we were told that the owner has three and he bought them all from the get-go. Now, he deals with middlemen, of course, because yeah. he's a pretty high-profile guy. Um, so who knows, maybe the middle guy was the guy who cut it open yeah. and did this resealing, you know, right? Yeah. But that being said, though, um, yeah, I mean, I think that everybody who owns a box that bought a box previously before should absolutely get it kind of tested yeah. by, you know, experts like them. Especially like a $400,000 investment. Yeah. Y yeah. You need to know, right? Yeah. You have to know what you're getting. And I think in today's world, you're going to have to open it at some point. Yeah. And you don't want it at your event in Vegas. 
You no. want it at the transaction, no. right? And that's why you were wanting to do yeah. something like this for yeah. everybody yep. live, for everybody to see right now. Yeah. You know, I, I think opening it was the best decision that we made <laughs> as far yeah. as yeah. investors and trying to uh, to do our due diligence. So yeah, was, well, listen, I, I just want to say I appreciate everyone involved with this transaction. Um, I, like I said, we know what we know. There are things that we know a lot about. We don't know a lot about Pokemon cards in this process. So that's why you guys are all here. We appreciate it, and if you're open to it and happen to be available whenever it is that you guys are able to secure a box and, and do this part two, we are ready and would love to have you guys back for that uh, if you're willing to and, and available. Most definitely. Okay, so Love to help you. I think we're about to get some news right now in the box. Okay. So oh, we're about so to hear something right now. So get ready, ladies and gents. Hey, look, this is good entertainment at least. Yeah. It's a great entertainment. I almost want pictures right now. Please, by all means. Just to see if they have the same type of, is it another ganged up box? Are the yeah. little sides of this? Are so I just spoke to the, th the seller of the actual box. He has two others They're in Philadelphia. We're flying to Maryland tomorrow. We're going to get both boxes. We're going to crack both boxes on videotape, make sure they're both correct. Okay. Then they can be brought to you okay, for weighment and all of that. Great. And if they are correct, we can continue with the deal. If okay, it's not great. correct, he's going to refund me the entire amount that I paid for the box, which unfortunately was the price a month ago, so I'm going to lose money, obviously, <laughs> okay. on what to come up with it. Gosh. But at least there's a solution of we have two more boxes. We're yeah. going to make sure A or B are real. And if right. A or B aren't real, then it's just going to be a refund I, I to you. Say, refund thank to you. Us. I would say uh, if you're going to open them on like video or whatever, do what kind of what you were going to do here and maybe put some tamper-proof seals on the box once you're done or the seal again. Yeah, of So course. just when you bring it here, you can continue doing another live stream. You'll see the tamper-proof seals are broken here. So you can yes, put agreed, yourself agreed. here. And then you'll put yeah. another. Is there, in fact, you know what? I'm going to give you. Yeah. Yeah. I was literally about to ask that. The tamper-proof seals. I was I'll get okay. some more. Use I, I eat two different brands. I figure more is better, so use both um, uh, when you're resealing your box. Perfect. So, Fantastic. Yeah, and those have serial numbers, so you can if you're filming live, you can actually tape it live as you're putting the tamper-proof ones on with the serial numbers, right? And that way, whoever gets it next, whether it's us, will be like, oh yeah, that was the one in the live deal. Yes. <laughs> like, I don't want yes. It's a great way to just continue the, you know, validation. Well, I'm sorry, guys. You know, this uh, obviously was a shock to all of us. But thanks for being for so, you know, thanks for being so cool about it. Awesome. You no, know, thank you guys. This will, I, this will I, definitely... You guys, a lot of work for you guys. You have to fly around and then deal with this stuff and really appreciate it. So. I think there's a, a good video to be made on how to pretty much identify fakes. and. <laughs> yes. I mean, this is... I mean, it's history. I mean, yeah, how many times are you going to be able look. to see a box that was resealed at, at a pretty high level along with the amount of junk? And I would keep this box as a reference just yeah, to that's examine a, it and compare it to other boxes. Absolutely. So all the cards and in you, there, Did you get close-ups of that? Nothing good, all junk, pretty much. There's like, it's all stuff from yeah. this year. Yeah. So <laughs> half, of it, half of it's 2020 no, I, I, can, I can sign this for you. I mean, you probably, <laughs> lose, you probably lose value in that energy. <laughs> oh, yeah. all right. Yep. You hold right. that. Well, uh, I think that's going to do it for our live stream, but yeah, we'll, we'll continue wrapping this up in person. Yeah, we'll guys, uh, cards, stay tuned. Um, if you want to see part two, that will hopefully be coming sooner than later, make sure you hit the notification bell. <laughs> Not just subscribe, but hit the notification bell. Otherwise, you will might miss the next live show. Uh, stay tuned. We'll let you know when that is. Thanks for joining us. This is not what we hope for, but hey, that's the life of an investor. That's the life of a collector. Uh, these things happen. And uh, we will figure this out. We will continue this story. Uh, we will continue the big Pokemon giveaway that we are going to include the entire community in on. So stay tuned to Dumb Money Live. And we will see you tomorrow.